Dan Graziano in for Greeny Kimberly Martin here at the Seaport with me. Uh, Dominique Foxworth and, and Swagoo are around. up there. They are. They're, they're in there. They're hanging out with us on a Wednesday morning to talk a little football. Guys, we have just two weeks left in the regular season. The playoffs are coming quick, and I have some questions. Dominique, my first question is for you. Will the Eagles, can the Eagles get their defense together in time? Can they, they've got reinforcements coming. Darius Slay, they made the change on the coaching staff. They picked up some guys at the trade deadline. Can that defense get fixed in time for the playoffs? Yeah, they picked up some big names in uh, Shaq Leonard and Bayard uh, to support the interior of that defense. But a lot of defense is about coordination and communication. And they haven't had a lot of time together just yet. So I think they'll be good against the mediocre teams, but we all know they got to beat the 49ers, and I don't think they're ready for them yet. Kimberly Martin, it's tough to find fault with what the Ravens are doing, but they've had fourth quarter leads in all three of their losses. So my question is, do they have what it takes to close out games in the fourth quarter in the postseason? Daniel, I think they definitely do. Listen, Patrick Smith and Roquan Queen, excuse me, Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, there we go, the twins, they're basically my spirit animals. These guys are closers. Kyle Hamilton on the ground one minute, intercepting passes the next. I think this team is peaking at the right time. The Ravens are good. Certainly look good on Christmas night. Swagoo, the last question is for you. Is the Cowboys running game going to be something that travels in the playoffs? Are they going to be able to win with that running game? Grass, it better for my for my sane my sane my sanity. But, That's not but what I was yes, asking. I believe it will. One, right. right? One because one because I think they they now, especially after this Miami game, understand that that's going to be an integral part. And the other part of this as well is that Dak Prescott is going to have to use his legs in order for this offense to be at its full maximum capacity. We saw him do it earlier, so I hope hopefully they'll take it into the playoffs with him. Hopefully, you know who else hopes that is uh, their uh, team owner Jerry Jones, who was speaking on his uh, I guess on his regular radio show yesterday, still <laughs> confident in his team's outlook despite. This, this past week's loss to the Dolphins in Miami. Take a listen. I tried to be as realistic as I could. Uh, I wouldn't trade our position uh, for a better one today. Uh, and it has everything to do with how healthy we are at key spots. I think Dak's the best he's been in his career. And I think if you can go into uh, this part of your season in the NFL and your quarterback is playing at this level, uh, you've got an outstanding chance to uh, uh, come home happy. See, a lot of what he says makes sense, but one key thing he said didn't make any. Who would not trade their position That's for a what better I'm one? That's what I'm wondering. Like, I, uh, we love Jerry Jones, yeah. but None of why would sense. he not trade his position? <laughs> like, right now, we're looking at this team wondering, can it win on win against good teams on the road? A team that is wonderful at home. But it still has questions. Like, they're literally coming off a loss, and he mm -hmm. says, I wouldn't trade my position. I think I would trade my position with the team that has the best record in the NFL. Sure. First round by, that kind of thing. But I like the confidence. This is a roster. They should have confidence in this roster. They have all the pieces. They got the quarterback. They got the defense. They just need to put it together consistently. So I think it's going to take some doing for them to catch the Eagles and win the division. Mm -hmm. They need help from yes. Arizona or the Giants, and they need to take care of their own business. So maybe Jerry's just sort of, you know, getting his mind around the fact that it's going to be a wild card season, that, that they're going to have to play on the road. And he's saying, that's fine, no problem. Neek, we asked Swagoo about the run game. We saw that highlight of Tony Pollard getting stuffed on the one-yard line in their first drive the other day. Is this going to be a problem? And if so, is it one that Dak Prescott can help them overcome? Yeah, it's definitely going to be an issue. Swagoo pointed this out to me last season, and I didn't think it was going to be a problem in the playoffs, but it certainly reared its head when they saw San Francisco. The running attack is something you're going to need. Good running and good defense in the playoffs seems to be one of the things that no matter how much the game changes, you need it. So the Cowboys need to be able to figure out how to get one yard with their top back in that situation. And I will say, Jerry Jones just be saying a lot of words, man, because yes. he said we healthy in the right positions. That's exactly not what, the, I mean, that's exactly what they aren't. Like, yes, right. they're healthy at quarterback, and he's playing well, but left tackle, not healthy. Starting corner, top corner at least, not healthy. Two of the most important positions on the field. There are issues with stopping the run. They're not healthy at defensive tackle right now. So I'm not sure what he talking about, but they just put a mic in front of that man. He just let it come out. 
That, that is true. History has shown us that that is the case, and, and he likes to, to, uh, to help create content for folks, including <laughs> us, and we appreciate that. Swagoo, the team that the Cowboys play this weekend is the Detroit Lions. They clinched their division uh, this past weekend. This is a team that the Cowboys could conceivably face again in January in a playoff game. What does Dallas need to prove this Saturday against Detroit? Well, first of all, Foxy, when you punch me in my eye, don't hit me in the back with a baseball bat after that, okay? <laughs> Just give me one bad thing at a time. We got two hours on this show. Just give I'm me sorry. one bad thing per conversation, okay? I can, like, give <laughs> we it to can me get in, to the in, next in, bad in thing the next right. hour. <laughs> yeah, the next hour, man. Here, here's, the, here's, what I, here's what I want to see uh, from, from Dallas Graz more. We talked about a little bit of that run game. When you get to the playoffs, now the, that's not the time to get it going. These last couple of games, whether it's wild card, that, that's, to me, that's a far gone conclusion. Whatever happens, you still have to go into the playoffs against really good teams and win football games. One, this run game has to come to a head, man. Like th this is the part of this team, which is probably going to give people that actually watch it, the confidence that Dallas can do what they need to do and at least be in games when it comes to the fourth quarter. The other thing is this, when you look at the Cowboys play, when we start talking about these road woes, and a lot of times we get locked in on defense, this defense only gave up 22 points to Miami. Now, I may be blind, deaf, and dumb, but I remember sitting here on TV hearing about how prolific the Miami mm -hmm. Dolphins offense was. So if you were going to tell me that our defense was only going to surrender 22 points, I would have probably picked Dallas to win that game. Run game, run game, run game. And y'all killed me and Jeff Saturday for talking about this. Yeah. But the run game is more about a complimentary piece to your defense and what you allow them to have the ability to do throughout a playoff run as opposed to us just thinking they're going to line down and teams going to let them sack their quarterback a million times. It has to be an integral part of what they do if they're going to have success. Yeah, these, these <clears throat> Pollard highlights are not uh, very encouraging. I, can, I still can't believe he doesn't get in uh, that, uh, that goal that line is. carry. Like, I can see that a million times and not understand yeah. how that happens. Kimberly, when you talk about uh, them playing Detroit at home this weekend, yeah. is there anything they can show you that would change your mind about the Cowboys? No. All right. Honestly, um, because I understand what Marcus is saying about <laughs> they need to. No, no, no. The reason I. No, no, no. The reason it was I. Say yes that, no question. I deserved it. The reason I say that is because they are excellent at home. Yes. This is a team that they have all the pieces. Yes, they have to get the run game going, but we've seen Dallas beat teams at home. They've beaten the Eagles like they've beaten good teams. Mm -hmm. For me, the question about Dallas remains them on the road. So them playing, at, you know, in Arlington, like, I. Okay, right. I, I, I would not be surprised if they won this game, but I also wouldn't have any answers to the question of can they go on the road and beat, beat a good team. And it's extremely likely they will have to do that in the playoffs just so we can remind people where things stand in the NFC East. The Eagles right now have an 81% chance to win the division, which of course would give them the first round home game and send Dallas on the road. If the Eagles win this week, they're playing That's Arizona, so that moves up to 92% chance. Dallas, they, there's That's a silver lining. More. If Philly does lose to Arizona or in Week 18 to the Giants, the odds swing back in the Cowboys' favor because they seem to have the tiebreaker edge. But they would need uh, a Philadelphia loss in order to take advantage of that. Let's play a game now that we like to call <laughs> Awesome, Awful, and Awkward. K-Mart, what right. is something you saw from Week 16 that was awesome? All right, here's something I know without a shadow of a doubt. Amari Cooper is oh my that goodness. dude. I had a front row seat to his franchise record, career record setting day, 11 catches, 265 yards. Joe Flacco looking like money. Here's the thing, Dallas Cowboys, we're talking about the Cowboys just now. Dallas Cowboys gave That's this man up for a fifth round pick and paid his entire and, and allowed the Browns to pay his entire salary. Andrew Berry, that mm. he knows something. I think the salary was the key, right? Like it was the key, but I, the... Andrew Berry's not. He doesn't care now. He seems to be worth yeah. the salary yeah. based on the performance uh, this weekend. I'm sure all of the people that have him on their fantasy teams uh, feel the same way. Swagoo, give me something awful you saw this weekend. Um, the Chiefs' offense, and <laughs> yes. I don't know if I'm gonna ever be comfortable saying this with the fact that Patrick Mahomes played quarterback for him, but they look absolutely atrocious. 
You see, you see Travis Kelsey trying to throw his helmet through earth because he's so frustrated about what's going on. <laughs> the run game, they suffering injuries. The offensive tackles are absolute horrid. This is this is as bad as we've seen the Chiefs. It was atrocious. Uh, Neek, something awkward from the weekend. That was awkward. Yeah, there wasn't much competition for this one. This was the most <laughs> awkward thing we saw of the weekend when Lamar Jackson got tackled by the referee causing a safety. And that game was so impressive that we almost forgot that that even happened. Yeah. We didn't even have it in the highlights yesterday. This was an outrageous, awkward play. Wow. But yeah, the memes off of it were fun. It was worth it. The expression on the official's face is what gets me. I mean, you've been on the sideline. Like, you know, if they're anywhere, if they're coming anywhere I know near you, an awkward sideline. Of, you, yeah. you hightail it, right? Like, that is, I mean, he had no choice there. He was <laughs> uh, on his butt. Hey, we got lots more.